Hello everyone, it's Nerp here, and as you may know, there were 28 new scrolls added to the test server earlier today, and I'm going to take my time and I'm going to show you guys all of them, you've probably already seen them though, so I'm also going to add my thoughts, opinions, insight, and where I think they'll like be in the meta when they come out, um, if I think they'll need to be nerfed, buffed after the tests on the test server, and generally what decks I think they'll be and if they're going to be good or not, so yeah. Um, I certainly like uh, like all the new scrolls. Um, I think that NG got huge uh, huge buffs. Um, I think that was needed because they were widely considered the weakest faction. Um, these 28 new scrolls are half of the Rebellion set, set number 5 that's coming out. So after, and I, I guess soon, uh, the other half of the Rebellion set will be on the test server, the other 32 scrolls, and then soon after that, hopefully they'll be in the live server. And yeah, so don't take uh, any of my predictions, like, don't take my word for it, because I'm probably going to be wrong for a lot of them, considering I thought Ilmire Tribes in when that came out was going to be absolute rubbish, but it ended up, like, being in every competitive modern decay deck, so I might not know what I'm talking about, even though I am the number one ranked player at the moment, but it'll be pretty funny to look back in a couple months and see how wrong I was on some scrolls and how I predicted them and how some other scrolls I was actually exactly where I thought they would uh, end up and how good they would be. So I have not played with any of these yet even though I am on the test server and um, I barely looked at them and so these are just my initial opinions and reactions. So yeah. Looks like we're gonna be starting with order and so seven new scrolls were uh, added for each uh, faction so we'll go like that. We'll go with them in order of cost. So the first one is Pilgrim's Feet. It's a one cost order enchantment, and it says when an enchanted creature moves, it is healed by two. Now when I see this, I think of Alain Vital, which uh, is just a one cost growth enchantment that heals your enchanted creature by one health each round. So this feels like a twice as good Alain Vital, but you do have to move every turn to make it work. So that could mess up your uh, your like positioning, especially when you're ordered, that matters a lot. I can see this being played on some like front blockers like wing shields and this thing down here, Gaunt Defender is a nice front blocker. But again, I don't think these little enchantments, like especially healing enchantments, are going to be played much in the current meta. Maybe things will change, maybe enchantments will get better. I can see Mojang definitely try to get uh, more enchantments that are good into the game. I think they want enchantments to be better. But uh, this, even though it's better than Alain Vital, I don't think it's quite good enough to be really used like competitively. But it's interesting to say the least. Um, next we have Soldier's Bond. It's a two cost uh, order enchantment. When enchanted creature takes damage, uh, enchanted unit takes damage, all units behind it count down by one. Uh, I don't really like this that much. It seems pretty weak for the two cost. So this, is, this would be like enchanting your frontline spiky unit with this, which you're putting a card into and it's two cost. And then when he takes damage or dies or whatever, the guys behind it will probably be attacking next turn. So I don't really like it that much because chances are, like, I mean, there's a pretty good chance they were attacking anyways behind it. Um, a lot of times your frontline blocker won't even take damage because he'll have armor 2 or something, like this Gallant Defender or uh, your Wing Shield. So I don't see this uh, card getting much action. So, uh, but who knows? Maybe it's going to be, like, the number one card. So, yeah. Uh, Infiltrate, it's a 3 cost order spell. Uh, at first glance, it looks like um, uh, Order's Languid because it says target units count down is increased by two and draw a scroll. Um, you know when it says draw a scroll, it can't be bad. It has to be pretty decent, actually, because you're at least getting your card back. So it's like whatever you're getting is just like probably usually just like gravy for just you're playing for the cost. But um, it's not as good as Languid. It's an extra, it's three costs. I'd much rather play like a Royal Skirmisher than this, probably. Um, it could be good for, like, well, what you do is you increase target countdown, uh, target units countdown by two. It's not base countdown, it's just regular countdown, so it's nice for, like, this Great Wolf about to attack, you can stop that from attacking. But, uh, I think it could get some play. I think it's, because it's, it's, it's a positive effect. You get to increase, uh, like, a target units countdown by two, like your opponent, and you get a scroll, so it's positive, but... I'd much rather, I think Order uh, is better at just like pumping out a unit every turn because you want to keep that board advantage without many comeback options now, without making all speed focuses. So, eh, I think this will be okay. Warding Stone, 3 cost Order Structure. 
It uh, has four health. Uh, when Warding Stone is destroyed in combat, opponent unit is returned to owner's hand. Draw a scroll. So another one of these draw a scroll things. Order already has a lot of card draw, a lot of cards like draw a scroll thing. Like this infiltrate one is actually just like, I think it's like maybe on the level of how good Kabak is. A little higher costed, but it does a little better. But Warding Stone, another draw a card thing. Um, whenever this egg is destroyed by something, um, that unit will go back to the, their opponent's hand. Not destroyed, so you're not going to kill it, but so your opponent can just play it again. It's like a pushback. Um, so this is good, like it will stop like a great wolf from using their relentless damage. It will just stop it in its tracks and then it goes back to their hands. And I like to draw a scroll thing, but uh, it doesn't seem too good. It also says destroyed in combat, so your opponent can get rid of it with like sparks and burns and all that stuff. It's another four health, so that's nice. Um, I just see three costs or a four health structure, not that good. I mean, yes, destroyed in combat, you get a scroll, but again, three order. I'd much rather have like this wing spear, for example, or a royal skirmish or something like that. But, uh, I guess this could see some play. I I don't think any of these top four scrolls will really be like must use in a uh, ranked order deck. The closest one would probably be this infiltrate and then maybe the boarding stone, but I don't know. I don't really love the new order scrolls as much as I do the other faction. Wing spear, three cost order creature. It is a human, and I think that there should be a soldier right here, considering the other. Uh, the other wings units all are soldier, soldier, soldier. Well, not that guy. Soldier, soldier, and soldier. Look at look at his unit art. He he's like a wing soldier without the sword and the shield, but a spear. One extra cost. Um, so this guy, I hope he gets the soldier thing, so he has synergy with wings captain. I don't see why he wouldn't though. I hope they add that. Um. He has two attack, two captain, two health, so a 2-2-2 two, two, two creature is underwhelming for three cost, but then you have to look at the abilities. He has spiky two, just like the uh, royal and uh, ducal spearman, commonly seen in order decks. Um, and he has the other ability, dominion. So let me just explain this, uh, they added two new abilities to the game, I think, I think two. Uh, dominion means that We'll say like Dominion, and then after that, it will have some kind of effect. Like it would be, Dominion means when you destroyed at least one of your opponent's idols, then this effect comes into play. So that means that this Wing Spear, if one of your opponent's idols is destroyed, this guy will have Spiky Four. Be a Spiky is increased by two. So this thing is going to be awesome if you <laughs> if one of your opponent's idols are destroyed. You're gonna have this thing that whatever attacks it almost in melee is going to die and that's gonna be really awesome so wing spear i think blows royal spearman out of the water because it's the same thing except for royal spearman has one extra health i guess that's good because it's not like dead to sparks and stuff but this this the the dominion spiky four seems very 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 good because most things die with four damage definitely uh gallant defender i like this guy uh, or girl, whatever. Um, so, it's four cost, order creature, it's a human, not soldier again. Uh, it's two attack, two countdown, four health, underwhelming stats for four, but then its ability is while you've got less units on the field than your opponent, creature gets armor two. I like this card. It uh, So it's kind of like armor two means just you uh, subtract uh, the damage dealt to it by two. So this thing will be alive for a long time because all those little units will do nothing to it you need six damage uh just to kill it or you need like to break up in smaller you really have to like get like um two four damage hits on it to kill it so the gallant defender is pretty good it's not like a wing shield where you're gonna have to put units behind it it could be good on its own but keep in mind it's only when you have less units on the field of your opponent i think the reason they did this is because this guy also uh, has like a a special effect when uh, you've got less units than your opponent. Um, I think because with the focus nerf, a lot of people aren't running Nanganels anymore, and Order really needs a comeback option. And with these two cards right here, they are much better when you have less units than your opponent. So this kind of helps Order get back into it with some really strong units when they have less units on the board than their opponent. And with growth spamming a little rack games all the time, you'll probably have less units. 
So Righteous Partisan, another four cost creature, human, um, two, two, two. Uh, so it's very bad for a four cost. But then, while you've got less units on the field than your opponent, Righteous Partisan gets plus four attack. So this is gonna be a six attack, two countdown guy just storming around the field when you have less units than your opponent. That's pretty good. But I don't think he's as good as this Gallant Defender though, like for their abilities. Uh, I think having this giant wall would be very nice, but the Righteous Partisan, I mean, it's pretty bad if uh, you have uh, more units than your opponent. And just the two health just is just gonna die to like a lot of things. His unit looks pretty cool with that mace. Mace ball. Uh, mm. And it's not relentless, so it'll just be attacking idols a lot, or like little creatures. But he's cool nonetheless. So I, these are the order scrolls that came out. Uh, I guess I'll just put the ones I think are going to be. Like, I'll move them around right now. The ones I think will be like in ranked decks will be more towards the left. The ones I think won't get much play will be more towards the right. So let's see. Um. So that's how I put it. Not great. Like, actually, I probably move everything here, like, down a little bit. You'll see. I like the other factions' cards much more, but these are some nice scrolls, especially these two creatures. So that's order. Energy time. I think energy got by far the biggest buff with their new scrolls. I love them. So let's start off with electrify. It's a two-cost energy spell. Each structure you control makes a range attack dealing one damage. Uh, this scroll, I don't know about it. I don't think it's going to do that well. I mean, for it to be effective, it's probably going to be in a structure energy deck. You're going to have, like, a structure or two on each row, and then you'll really be able to do a lot of damage to idols, maybe crow to, or something. But, I guess it could be used to, like, clear their board, like, if you have a lot of structures. But, I don't really think it's going to be that good. Maybe you could see some play in, like, uh, uh, some energy decks, though. Some, I mean, uh, structure decks. Uh, I'll have to really try to test this one out in games to see how it really uh, fares. Hired Smuggler. I like this card. I think this will be in uh, most, if not all, structure decks. It's a creature. It's a human. Two attack, two countdown, two health. So, fine for a two cost creature. Not great, but its uh, ability is range attack. So, that's good. And Pillage. So, Pillage uh, is, is in is the uh, ability exclusive to energy and growth similar to dominion uh, is exclusive to uh order and decay and dominion was the ability after uh what it says the ability is activated when you have one idol of your opponent's side destroyed pillage just means this ability is activated every time this creature uh deals damage to an idol so i think uh this thing could be really cool. You just put this hired smuggler in like the bottom row or something, and just if the person, if your opponent doesn't protect your idol, this hired smuggler would just keep attacking that idol and drawing a card every other turn, uh, drawing a structure scroll. That's its a uh, pillage. So every time uh, this unit deals damage to an idol, so you could just keep that like tucked away, keep hitting an idol. Um, you probably destroy some idols with it if your opponent doesn't do anything about it. You draw a structure scroll. So this is card draw energy needs the clock libraries i mean i guess in structure energy they go off pretty fast with machine divinators but i like hard smuggler a lot this one is causing quite a buzz power trip it's a two cost energy spell um it says double your current energy if your energy is then eight or more draw a scroll wow this is pretty cool um so it does take into account this two energy you're paying for it i believe so let's say you have six energy at the moment. Play this card. You're gonna lose. You use two energy, so then you have four of the six, and then you multiply that four by two. So then you have eight. Then you have eight. So then you draw a scroll, or if you have more than eight, you still draw a scroll. So usually I would play this like when I am uh like just because it's not gonna be a bad scroll to play because most more often you're gonna get a scroll back from it. So it's gonna be like free to play. And then you're gonna have more resources to use. So I could play like, 
a cannon automaton or something or a solemn giant hasted like earlier than i should be able to so power trip is going to be awesome i can also do some crazy things with like clips and like just you can really make, get a lot of resources with this thing so this card is very cool i think it'll be in like every ranked deck because uh it doesn't really have much many downsides to it it's very uh powerful it can get you big units on the board earlier and it, you get a scroll from it boom reaver this card is pretty underwhelming uh first of all if you just look at it it's like it's like they did a scatter gunner design but they like made him like look a little fatter i don't know i don't really know he's like a this guy's like a dwarf i don't know well he's a three two three for three that's pretty standard for three cost scrolls three two three I think he'd be okay, but I don't think he'll get any play at all, considering energy has so many good three-cost scrolls. He's range attack, so he's like a breaker from growth, except for this guy's range attack. The breaker gets plus one attack every time it attacks. Three, it's it's a reaver. Uh, maybe down the line, Mojang's going to have other reaver cars that will work together. But right now, as it stands, I don't think Boom is going to get any real play at all, because energy is just so many better three-cost options. Meanwhile, this guy could be another three cost option. I think he could be pretty good. The replicaton, replicaton. So he's an automaton. That means so that's good because he'll be buffed by the scout automaton. Three two two. So he's range attack. His unit thing looks kind of cool. Um, when replicaton is destroyed, return to owner's hand if your current energy is three or more. Now I love this. Uh, this means that like all right you have to remember that this says current energy when this is current energy it means like if last turn you used uh used uh use six energy by playing two boom reavers then you only have zero current energy because you only had six like how do i explain this um like it's not like however the much that is in the denominator it's in whatever is in the numerator of your uh of your amount of energy so like if you get this guy on the board i know it takes I, at first glance it seems like oh he's three costs of course you're gonna have at least three energy so then when he dies you're just gonna get him back that's amazing it's like a free scroll like sister the fox or something but i still think he's very good but it only happens if you had like three leftover energy from the turn before like you had three leftover energy that you let's say you didn't use to pump your forward or something so and then if he dies that turn then you'll be able to get him back so he is still pretty good i like him but uh i think automaton decks can be a thing especially with this next card but um he's not as good as you think i do like him a lot though echomaton another automaton just a placeholder uh, image they just took the this guy he's actually really cool it's like a turtle with like some like power splines up i don't know it's pretty cool uh, so it's one, two, three. Very bad for a four-cost creature. Not even armor or anything. Not one attack. But when an opponent plays a spell, increase attack by two. When Ekamaton is destroyed, your if attack is two or more, increase energy by one. I love this card. Um, keep in mind, spells are not enchantments. Only spells. That means like, well, self-explanatory enchantments won't buff this guy's attack. But uh, so very fast as your, if your opponent's like playing it, <laughs> any kind of spells. Is gonna have three attack, five attack, seven attack, nine attack, and then your opponent will have to deal with this thing. It only has three health, so it won't be too hard to destroy. But if it only has like nine attack on the board with like a two count on, you're gonna have to deal with it. And its other ability is awesome. Also, when Ekamagaton is destroyed, if attack is two or more, increase energy by one. So for attack to be two or more, it just needed one spell the opponent had to play, so then it has three attack. So I think more often than not, when this thing dies, you're just gonna get energy from it. Like your permanent energy is gonna be increased by one. So I like all this new energy ramp. Like um, machine chance to do that, and Ekamatons do that. I really like how because energy is really based around I think gaining energy. Now it's like you gotta manage your energy for these guys to die, and this guy has to do with it. Also the Tempest Runner I'm gonna get to in a second, and the Power Trip is pretty cool. So. I think this Ekamaton kind of aids to that kind of playstyle, and I think Automaton decks are going to be a thing. Tempest Runner, four cost creature, human tribesman. So don't be fooled by the zero attack, it will be higher. Um, 
2 countdown, and 4 health. Range attack, so pretty standard for energy. And armor 1. Uh, I like 4, four health and armor 1. That's good by itself. That's the same as a cannon automaton. And this guy's uh, ability is Tempest Runner's attack is equal to your current energy resource. So like this replicaton, it has to do with the current energy resource. So if you have, if you had, if you had nothing to play the turn before, but you had six energy that you just didn't have any scrolls to play with it, this guy's gonna have six attack that turn. So that is gonna be very strong. Then you'll have like a cannon automaton. But oftentimes this guy will have a very low attack because you've been using your energy and you've been playing cards and you've been pumping your forge, you've been pushing, pumping your solemn giants. So. I do still like this card a lot because in a late game, energy tends to get really high resource armors with the machine chance, and now with this Ekamaton, it's going to have like 10, 13, 14 energy, so then even if you use a lot of energy that round, this guy could end up with like 6 or 8 or 9 attack, and then you put like a piercing projection on this thing, and this thing is freaking havoc. So Tempest Runner is definitely cool, and I think he's going to get a good amount of play. So I love these energy cards, uh, bold prediction here, uh, energy is going to be right back into it and automaton decks are going to be uh, fighting with the top rank decks. And now let's see, uh, I think this guy's going to be used a lot, well that was weird, wait, how come it's moving? Is that a bug? The top is moving, alright. Uh, this is going to be played a lot, that's going to be played a lot. This back at actually all the way up. Uh, this is actually going to play the most. See, look, look at all these energy scrolls near the, near the, near the front here. Okay. There you go. See, like, compared to the order one, it was, like, all over down here, kind of. Energy got some very nice creatures, some nice spells, like the power trip. So, yeah. That's my take on energy. And, moving on. Ah, growth. Everybody likes growth. Uh, not really, a lot of people actually hate growth, but has a uh, has been doing well recently in uh, ranked because other decks have, all decks have really been ha coming back. But growth got these seven new cards, and we'll start with Culling the Flock. It's a two cost growth scroll. Sacrifice target beast. All other beasts you control have their attack increased by that unit's attack until end of turn, and become fully healed. I think this is a good card. Uh, at first glance, it looks like a crimson bull. Cause it's like your guys will like probably get around to attack for that turn so and anything close to that even if it's not as good as that to be added to a growth deck is going to be good because you know i, I wish i had like 10 crimson bulls in my growth deck or maybe not that many but that's what it feels like because crimson bull is so good so this will be like you sacrifice a mangy wolf and then all your guys get a crimson bull because you just get plus two attack because mangy wolf had to attack um and all your beasts will uh get uh fully healed um i think that will be underrated i think people will forget about that forget about like oh that great wolf's gonna die to his brain lice next turn nope calling the flock um now let me see Wait, how do i s like a pertinence i think they're trying to make beast decks a thing which isn't a bad idea like this this uh card came out with the last set how do i search for beast do i like do, do i just type beast no well beast right is a beast i think i do like t or like T beast yeah there we go all right so these are all the beasts in the game uh that's a card that i'll get to later so i mean there's not really that much you'd want to sacrifice i guess you could sacrifice an owl from your sister the owl but like that's only going to give you one attack not that not like that's not that much it's like a ancestral totem and we're going to do the same thing I think main jewels are going to be the most like targeted for the color in the flock because you're getting two. But and these other like faction things, I don't think are going to be doing that much. So yeah, I do think calling the flock is going to be good though. I like that scroll. Unground. This is pretty close to removal for growth. It's a two cost enchantment. Any time an idol takes damage, an enchanted unit takes half of that damage rounded down. So you can like put this on. If you're growth, you can put this on like your opponent's um, your opponent's 
uh, Royal Skirmisher, and then he's tucked away behind like a wing shield across the board, but your Great Wolf is attacking for like 6 damage on an idol this turn, he'll do 6 damage to idol and 3 damage to uh, that Skirmisher and he'll die. So this could be cool. Um, I'm not really sure uh, if it's going to be like in every single ranked growth deck, but I think it's going to get some play because this is pretty solid removal for growth considering they're attacking idols a lot anyways because they're like uh, kind of uh, rushing down um, the units and idols. So yeah, that's Unground for you. Vengeful Vetter. Look at that thing. It's a Vetter, but cooler. Uh, so Vetter, it's a creature Vetter, um, as you might guess. So he's a 2-2-2. Two, two, two. For two costs, the regular Vetter is a 1-1-1. One, one, one. One, no, it's a 1-2-1 one, one for one cost. And they have different abilities. The uh, Vengeful Vetter um, has Pillage. That means when he attacks an idol, this thing uh, activates, so increase growth by one. That's pretty darn amazing. Imagine getting this thing out on turn two. This is like permanent uh, growth increase. So if you get this guy out on turn two, and your opponent has nothing to like block or like stop it or remove it this thing you can just hit an idol every other turn and then you're gonna get so much growth and you'll be able to like god hand like in like turn two not not that fast but yeah i was exaggerating but you know what i mean um i think this is gonna be in like uh very uh competitive like tournaments and all that because this is a good card um i think it will probably replace regular better in my growth deck it's pretty cool even if i uh, your, your opponent has to remove this thing, like, early game. Um, your opponent can try blocking his idols, so this can get hit, but then this thing is still, like, allowed to hit units. So it's a very good card. Verdant Veil Enchantment. Enchanted creature's health is increased by 3, as long as health is equal to or higher than base value. Uh, enchanted creature cannot be targeted by spells or enchantments. So when I see this, I think Oak Blood, but a little better. So Oak Blood um, is a growth scroll that increases health by uh six which is a lot and then it's for four cost so this is one less cost but it and it enchants by three so that's half the thing but then i really like the um the uh, uh, like uh, other thing it does with it so like um this is like an untainted which uh actually it's better than untainted because it's Spells or enchantments. When you enchant something with untainted, it only protects from uh, spells. So, yeah, and abilities. But this doesn't protect against abilities, so this doesn't say so. So you can put this on your like uh, Great Wolf, and he won't get damage cursed. And that's pretty nice. Or Brain Lice, or whatever you want. And he gets some extra health. So I don't think like this card is gonna be played uh, much competitively though, because it just doesn't doesn't feel like enchantments are really going to take off just yet, but I could certainly see like this card being better in the future when enchantments are more of a thing. I like this next card. Striped Fang Bear. Wow. For four cost... Look, wait, just take a moment to look at this thing. <laughs> it's huge. For four cost, it's a growth beast. Um, I think there's going to be beast decks now with Essence Feast and Appurtenance and calling the flock you know um one attack two countdown five health so that one attack looks really low uh normal two countdown and five health is very nice um if opponent controls any humans or if your opponent like is playing the game because almost every deck has humans like growth has the kinfolk uh the uh uh, energy has like the tries or whatever, something like that. Uh, Decay has a lot of humans, and Order, of course, has a lot of humans. <laughs> um, so this guy, more often than not, will have Relentless and Attack increased by 30. So he'll usually be a 4 2 5 for 4 cost with Relentless, which is very good. So I think this is going to be in competitive growth decks because humans are just always there almost. So, Striped Fang Bear. You're gonna see a lot of action at least in my growth decks and it looks pretty cool so yeah the, enough another four drop for growth is nice i know it has rack and brother of the wolf but i think this guy's probably better than brother of the wolf because he's he's gonna he's gonna usually be a four two five from that list five health is pretty good nice wetland ranger a human um it's four cost 
and it's a rebel. I'm not sure what the rebel means. Um, the unit animation, similar to the uh, Kinfolk Ranger. What call it? Yeah, very similar. It's like his her grandpa, but uh, one attack, one countdown, and three health. So pretty bad uh, base stats for four cost. Uh, one counts on it, I guess, is good, so it could be, like, enchanted, uh, like, with, uh, stag hearts and stuff, so I got attacking, like, like a brave every turn. But it has pillage. All your units get plus one attack during your next turn. This is very interesting. Remember, pillage is every time this unit does damage to an idol. So since he's attacking every turn, if your opponent doesn't protect your idols and this guy is, like, back on the bottom or something and not getting dealt with, this thing will be attacking every turn an idol. So that means every turn your uh, your units will have plus one attack. This sounds very good, but it really isn't as good as you think because a simple ancestor totem will do the same thing, and then your opponent has to destroy that thing. Whereas this guy, they just have to, like protect the idol. They are the same amount of cost, so they're. I think it's going to be kind of like one or the other in growth decks. I think ancestor totem is still better. Has less health though, so it's easily easily destroyed. But then this guy, you can. You can just kind of protect your stuff. But he is attacking every turn, so he still is versatile. He could be used to attack units, and he could also be uh, enchanted and made better because he attacks every turn, so that'd be nice. And last, we have Seed of Insurgency for six cost and his enchantment. You can see Mojang is trying to make enchantments a thing. When enchanted creature is destroyed, it's summoned again on the same tile. Its countdown is set to one. I don't know about this card. It seems very overpriced for what it does. Well, actually, I guess it's really not really if you think about it, but... So, this would be like... You have your very important Great Wolf, and you put this six-cost enchantment on it. So that means when it's destroyed, it's just gonna immediately pop right back up uh, as a new creature, and then it will have a countdown set to one. Um, countdown set to one means it will just attack next turn. So... Like... I don't really think this is going to get much play. I could be wrong. This could be like the new meta. But I feel like you want to put this on a creature that costs a lot to play. Because that the, the whole point is you're getting to play it again at like no tempo loss. So like it is card advantage because you're like you're beginning to play it again. Like you're, you're, you're playing this and it's replacing itself with the unit you're playing again. So if you put this in like a Jarl or a Great Wolf or a Sister of the Owl, I feel like it would be good. But those are like the really only things in growth that I would probably put it on. So, and Captain Sets Zero is very good also, but we'll see. We'll see how this does. So, and how I think they'll be played. Um, um, That's how I think it's pretty good. I like orders. I like growth of cards. Not as crazy as MSG though. A little better than order, I think. And let's move on to Decay. Ah, uh, Decay. So Decay, widely considered the best current faction, uh, did get probably better with these new cards. But yeah, I really like Decay's new cards. It it actually uh, they were quite powerful. But um, I don't think like the buffs it got were as great as energy buffs. But they're pretty good. So first it has a two cost creature called Blade Husk. It is undead, so that means it will have a synergy with Restless Bones and like with other husks and stuff. So um, Bladed Husk, it had, well, that looked pretty cool first of all. Um, four, three, two. Uh, so you get that guy up for two, uh, on turn two and you have a four attack, two health creature, which sounds like a lot, but considering like a crossbowman, it's that exact thing, 4 3 2, and it's only one cost. And that's not even that good in the game. So, this Blady House might not be that good, but then it has Dominion Relentless. So, Dominion, remember, is when one of your opponent's idols is destroyed, uh, this ability will activate. So, I guess a 4 3 2 Relentless creature. Decay doesn't have many, much Relentless besides Harvester, so I guess this is actually going to be pretty good. I think this will get played more often than not in. Uh, in ranked decay decks or competitive decay decks, whatever you want to call it. So I like Blade Husk. Um, but I mean, even if you get this out on turn two, it won't be able to attack till turn five. I think this is going to be more like a late game card because of the Dominion Relentless or mid game, whatever you want to call it. 
fog hound. It is a beast. Um, two attack, two countdown, three health. So immediately you see these two, two, three, and you think gun automaton or kinfolk ranger, pretty standard for two cost. And it's like okay for two costs, it's like standard, you know. And dominion plus two attack. So that's what makes this guy stand out. Um, so when that idol, first idol is destroyed, which will be pretty common because decay is a nice curve, you'll get that rod eater out early, and then just like smash an idol down with your rippers and rod eater. And then uh, these guys will have will be four two three for two costs, which is amazing. Four two three for two costs will be very good. So I think these guys, along with the blade house, will be two very good two cost order group order creatures. So now order, so not order, uh, decay. So now decay will have all these good two cost creatures like blade house, spog hat, loyal darkling. Elmire Tribesman. I think Elmire Tribesman might get the boot. Uh, in my deck, at least. Because these guys are pretty good. I like them. And this guy has 3 health, which is nice. Cursed Presence. Enchantment for 2 decay. Enchant opponent unit. Whenever enchanted enchanted unit takes damage, opponent units on that row get cursed 1. If enchanted unit is a structure, those units get cursed 2 instead. I really... It's hard to wrap my mind about how this card is going to do in, in games. It's like... You're enchanting that front row guy, you're gonna deal some damage to it, and then all the things in back of it will get curse. I don't know about this card, I'm not gonna dwell too much on it. I don't really have much to say. I think it will do okay, I don't think it's gonna be in many decks, but I'm sure some people will find really good ways to play it. Baleful Witch, I like this card. Three decay, human mystic, so human, important, uh, witch doctor synergy. It looks like the colors might be a little too bright here. It looks like it's out of like a picture book or not a picture book but like a uh it's like a cartoon it's very bright <laughs> but um mystic whatever that means uh ranged attack just like witch doctor and oblivion seeker uh and curse monger when baleful witch comes into play cursed creatures take one damage so that's what makes up for the only two 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 for three this is going to be i think pretty good in in uh competitive play and like tournaments and stuff or in ranked matches because play like an an uh uh, what's that thing called? Bloodline Taint. Um, like, get some, like, order creatures, like, cursed, and then, or also, and then, uh, like, use Cluster Hacks, maybe, curse some creatures, and then put this thing out, and, like, all those creatures take three damage, or all those creatures take two damage. And also, with your curse, uh, not your curse monger, or, yeah, your curse monger could have cursed some stuff, and you get this thing out, and then, uh, it will do a lot of damage also. So, I think this is gonna be use a lot and so, uh humans that's nice wait also you've got to notice cursed creatures could also be your own creatures i yeah that sounds like it would do that too so i think that could actually be used to your advantage like you use your curse monger to curse one of your like curse your loyal darkling and you put this out and the loyal darkling dies and then your rod gets buffed you turn into a husk and your harvester goes off something like that stitcher four cost human again works with a uh, witch doctor 222 two, two. so 222 two, two for four that's even worse than this 222 two for three so this ability better be even better than this guy's ability but i have to say i don't think it is when countdown is zero sacrifice target creature and increase another target creature's attack and health by two so just countdown is increased by two so um i i kind of like it i i like how this guy can decay oftentimes to have the ability to like kill your own units and choose which unit you want to kill like pretty often is pretty powerful in my opinion like to be able to like just easily buff your rod eaters and get your harvester attack off if you have more a lot of these guys and you can it's nice to give a creature two too you can sacrifice like a Meyer shamble or something not very important or like a ripper and get a husk out of it and uh you can make like a um Harvester have extra attack for that uh, Relentless or something like that or the blade husk so stitcher I feel like it actually will be played uh, Quite a bit. I like it not as much as like Baleful Witch though or Bogham Morbid curiosity five cost uh, Enchantment whenever enchanted creature kills another creature you draw a scroll. I feel like this is over cost um, Like What's that what's that thing called uh you know that two cost decay a uh, creature draw a scroll and it where is it why am i blank here mr mr sage yeah 
When Viscerace kills another unit, draw one scroll. So this five cost, you just give a unit that enchantment. I guess it could be pretty good to like put on that harvester that's attacking during that turn and then it's destroying three units, so you're just getting three cards, but you're still using this card supply. Um, I don't know. I don't really think a five cost enchantment unless it's amazing is going to be played, so I don't really see a bright feature for the scroll, but it could definitely be used in some cool ways. This one is seven cost enchantment, so this one better be damn near uh, uh, amazing. Whenever enchanted creature, enchanted unit destroys an opponent creature, draw a creature scroll. While you have more creatures than your opponent, enchanted creatures attack and health are increased by four. Uh, it's promissory. No, that's just the, that's just the flavor text. Um, so I feel like this is also overpriced as a gem for seven decay. When I saw the spoiler for this, this is like a seven decay enchantment. I thought it was gonna be like, when target creature, uh. When enchanted creature deals damage to an idol, you like win the game or something like that. Because for seven uh, costs, I mean, so this means that you're, it's kind of like the morbid curiosity because you're getting a scroll every time you kill a creature, but this one, this time it's, um, you get a creature scroll. So, um, I mean, I guess it's better to get a creature scroll than another one of these morbid curiosities, but. I guess it's a little bit better and then also while you have while you have more creatures than your opponent uh, en Enchanted units attack and health are increased before this is I feel like this is the main part so If your uh, board is like filled with things you play this and then you have you could turn your 525 which doctor into a 929 which doctor something like that uh, It's gonna be I don't really see this getting played too much but you never know if like decay players will want to play these high cost enchantments considering if like when the new legendary comes out maybe it's going to be good you want to use that to may as well like play these high cost things so we'll see let's see how would i like these um da, 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 da. There you go. All right, so each faction has a lot of like uh, like three or four very good cards, and then other so-so, not great ones. Usually you see the creatures up here and the enchantments down here, if you didn't notice the gems and spells. All right, so that was my opinions on the scrolls. So leave a like if you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you all next time. So thanks for watching.